She woke up at her usual like 5.30 a.m. and then our alarm went off shortly thereafter. All right, we've got some cards to mail. <laughs> when we're door knocking and canvassing, uh, typically if the weather's decent, um, I walk most places. I'm getting to know the, the physical parts of the ward um, in a pretty unique way. We're uh, headed downtown to um, be a guest on a long-running radio show live from the Heartland. So we'll be doing just a brief interview about, you know, running for, running for office. It's going to be a priority for me to make sure that we can have our ward services taken care of and there's good staffing in the office and that we're a hub of information. When we think about, you know, our city budget, how we're prioritizing or spending our money, um, what, what programs and services we're funding, that's not a ward level issue, it's a citywide issue. Um, and it's absolutely, I think, paramount, paramount like, that we work with aldermen across the city as a city council and through those committees to make sure that we're taking care of the issues. And it's something that I don't see happening um, very well or frequently enough. It's one of the biggest dysfunctions of current city council. Those wrong-headed approaches that have left us saddled with, you know, unfunded pensions, um, dysfunctional agencies that really make up the core of our public services. Why don't you give us your main platform issues? Before campaigning and, and since starting this campaign, talking to hundreds and hundreds of our neighbors, the issues that people in the 49th Ward want to see, we want to maintain affordable housing. Right. We want to make sure we can stay in Rogers Park and, and 49th Ward, um, you know, through whatever next wave of development we're facing. We want accessible housing. We want to have good neighborhood public schools, and I plan to be a champion for that where the current alderman has not been. We want to support our small, locally owned businesses. We want um, a safe and healthy community, looking at how um, we need to develop better relationships in our community with one another through block clubs and other efforts that are not just about adding more police, um, because community safety looks different for, for different people. Good luck, Maria Haddon. Thank you. Going Thank you. forward. Go. Oh, button. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Then it's done. All right. transit-oriented development piece. Yeah, what's that about? So those are some zoning changes that are looking at allowing uh, for more density in new developments. So allowing more, like kind of more units or higher buildings around transit areas. If we add a lot more units without coming up with a transportation right. solution, then we're going to end up with more people with cars yeah. and less yeah. parking. I see I'm one of the lucky ones that has a driveway in Rogers mm -hmm. Park. Mm -hmm. But a lot of folks don't, no, and they absolutely. have to park on the street. I've been here forever. I raised mm -hmm. my children here in this house. The diversity of our community is incredible. So. Yeah, it is. So in those houses across the street there, there's two. They've got the Maria signs up. Um, so some of the places we've been before. So it's kind of fun to see uh, the different signs in the windows where we go. org. You can sign up to volunteer, to donate, or find out more about the campaign. And also, today is Shop Jarvis Square. And so, uh, don't let the weather keep you from visiting some <laughs> local artists and businesses um, at the Jarvis Square. Uh, you can grab some food, pick up some gifts, do some holiday shopping. Uh, but we'll be having lunch there sometime a little afternoon. Uh, so, maybe we'll see you around.
So this is one of the places it's that's the most Rogers Park, from the Frida to Molly Costello to the Heartland picture. This is the most Rogers Park. Ooh, great view. But put it in your own words. Mm -hmm. Remember, these are your neighbors who you're speaking to. All right, so now let's go to the script. Hello, may I speak with Joseph Carrico? This is he. Oh, hi, oh, my name's Gretchen. I'm a volunteer for Maria Hadden, the independent progressive Democrat running for alderman in the 49th Ward. Maria's challenging the incumbent, Joe Moore. Have you heard of Maria? I think so, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really good. People want to be involved in government, they want to participate, but we live really different lives than people did 200 years ago. There are these huge, huge contrasts of like how we live, what our expectations are, and how our government works. Our neighborhood is one of the, it's not one of, it's the last affordable neighborhood on the north side of the city. That affordable housing and a diversity of housing is what supports the diversity of race, ethnicity, and culture that has long been like why people live here. So making sure that we can have development managed um, without displacement is issue number one for me. Um, it can be done. There are some existing kind of policies and practices around the city um, that I would like to implement here. Um, to make sure that we don't have these fast waves of development that result in the kind of negative effects of gentrification um, that we think of. We've got some great neighborhood public schools that could be even better, and we need more of our residents to want to send their kids to our schools. Um, they need resources, they need access to programs, and they need a public elected official that's going to go to bat for them, which we currently don't have. One of the best things you can do um, is to tell other people in the war um, that I exist because I have to know like there's an option um, that's a lot of the work and then if you like what you heard here today and you think you're gonna support me tell other people about it and try and get them to vote for me in February um, and I appreciate your time so thank you, thank you. Awesome.